Buy uh, products with almost any filter, as long as you follow within a certain parameter. It's not rigid, okay? Here's the thing. If you have a fish only, a fish only tank, and you want to have, oh, by the way, you can probably put in about twice as many fish with my system. <laughs> the reason why is due to the fact that it works so fast. My bacteria usually goes ahead and re uh, replicates every five to seven minutes under optimum conditions. The other one replicates every 30 minutes. So you can see you have a greater population in a shorter time. First of all, if you have your aquarium and it's going, this is what you have to have. One is a tri-base carp. Now people say, oh, it looks like any other carbon. If you look at this carbon and you look at other color carbon, I should have brought some. You'll notice that theirs takes half the amount of volume as mine does for a pound. And what does this mean? Does it mean it's less activated? That's number one. Number two, what the tribase has is three types of carbon in one pellet. So each one of them on the, on the normal range and the dedicated range can take out more pollutants because of this. As an example, in the old times when they wanted to distill liquor, and they wanted to get the color out, they would use a wood carbon. And a wood carbon normally would have a vacuole like this very well. Because a color, a color molecule is very big. And how the carbon <coughs> works is the carbon sticks on, I mean, how the, uh, it's called the Van der Waal forces. You've heard of this before. And, and this is what takes the color out of your liquids. They used to use it, and it used to be an activity of around 20, you know, 25 percent. That was big, and it was a wood carbon. The coconut shell carbon, on the other hand, is a very small vacuum like this. And what it does is it can take out things that are very small. Where if this, if this was a small, say, a small molecule, it'll still have the attraction in the Van der Waal forces but not as strong as if it was into a smaller vacuum. You follow me? Okay. Then you have regular one, which is about like this. Now, normally this is what you <coughs> mostly find in carbons, is they'll, they'll do a pretty good job in things of this nature, like that. But if it gets very small, this is unable to hold it to the Van der Waal forces. If it gets too big, it can't enter in. Now, I don't use wood carbon. I just want to tell you that right now in one of my, one of my uh, blends. But the thing is, is this is the reason why anybody who has used my carbon can see a difference within 24 hours and the longevity of the carbon, which is very important. So now the tri-base carbon. What do you do? Everything in this system is mathematical. It's not guesswork. You know, you've got into a story and you've gone, well, I'm going to have this, this, and this, and this. And they go, well, you might need this, you might need this. And then you go home and you do it. And then a week or so later, the fish and the organisms are not doing well. And then what happens is you go back and say, it's not, do oh, well, you need to buy this, you need to buy this. How many times has this ever happened to anybody here? A lot. At least no time in your entire life, right? I used to sell fish. I used to see these people do it all the time. Well, this is what's nice. You take the size of the tank. It doesn't matter what the size of the tank is. First thing, the size of the tank has two things. One, it requires the amount of tri-base pelletized carbon. Two, it determines the flow rate. <coughs> flow rate is 10 times an hour. Now, you can say, well, a reef needs this. No. Why? Because you need to elevate your dissolved oxygen on your surface. And what we do, we have the water here, instead of coming underneath like this, which is in mechanically infusing carbon dioxide, this is a fact. Right here, you're shooting it parallel with the surface, just slightly above the surface. It drives off the carbon dioxide, which does not have a great affinity for water, number one. And because it creates a vacuum, 
then it infuses more oxygen into our air, into the water, which elevates the oxygen. A normal tank set up the normal way <coughs> will normally have 6.1 parts per million to 6.3. And you say, well, I can do a lot with a, uh, with a uh, protein skimmer. Protein skimmer does not really put a lot of uh, oxygen. It may go up, maybe, if you're at 6.1, it may elevate up to 6.3. Now, uh, you can tell, let's take a probe, stick it in the, uh, stick it in the uh, discharge, and watch your values. That's the easiest way. Don't take my word, just do it yourself. The other thing is, with this system, we usually achieve in salt water 8.5 parts per million <coughs> of dissolved oxygen. Remember I said you could hold more fish? Keto. With this 8.5, that means the bacteria is not competing with the fish for oxygen. They have enough to go ahead and carry on the respiration, and at the same time, you can put more fish in there because they can have a, uh, a bigger biome. Okay? Now, for every pound of our carbon, Usually you have a little over, give or take, about six square miles of surface area. That's a little more than bio balls, a little more than all the ceramic and all this other stuff. Within three weeks or two weeks, depending upon your system, you'll have one pound of bacteria per one pound of carbon. Do you realize how big a bacterial bed you have there? Remember, this bacteria is all through your aquarium. This is where it'll mostly reside. The third thing is it has an available carbon, and the available carbon allows this organism, or these organisms, because there's more than three in my compound, to reduce nitrates aerobically. And because they're able to reduce it aerobically, you get a much faster reduction, as I will point out later with some of the lab results. Now, that's what it does. First of all, it's very simple. You have a 10-gallon aquarium. We use .1667 times the gallons, empty, you don't care about the rock, tells you how much tri-base carbon to use. That's simple. Is it hard? No. All right. That's if you have an all-fish tank. If you have a reef tank, which means you're supposed to have fish and corals in there, you divide this by one third. So say as an example, it came out, the equation it came out for nine pounds. And then you say, I'm gonna have a reef tank, now you only need three pounds. That's how simple it is, all right? Any questions on this so far? This is more like a going to school rather than a lecture, right? <laughs> All right, that's how, that's how I do it. You gotta see it when I'm in the, uh, when I'm mushrooming marines on other things. Anyway, that's the first thing. The first thing was the formula. Second thing is the turnover in the tank. Third thing is water shooting across the surface. And the very fourth thing for this, which is very hard, is you keep your carbon clean. So once a month, you take about a half of your carbon out, rinse it off in cold tap water, and put it back in. You can put a pinch of the bacteria in a pinch. And when you've done that, that's it. You need to do other things, too, if you want. Now, how many people have a problem, seriously now, with their pH and their calcium elevating up and down? All right. When you use it in conjunction with our pH rock, you can <clears throat> maintain a pH, a solid pH, between 8.1 to 8.5. Remember, in the ocean, in the ocean, it is not 8.2 all around. If you go to the Gulf, you know, where we have our war right now, it's a little warm there. Has anybody been there? Is it warm? It's Hot. really warm. You have a <laughs> lot of evaporation, so what do you think your pH is going to be? Is it going to be lower or higher? It's going to be higher. That's correct. You come up to the Arctic, where it's a little cold, and what do you think your pH is going to be? Drop down. It's going to be down. And if you go in the mid-ocean, 
That's where it's usually running between like seven, eight, seven.